Dr. Sri, you're on mute. Sorry, I think Dr. Sri had some difficulty, so um, we'll let him join us shortly. Welcome back to the street. You may okay. start. Okay, sorry because I think now the you can't see me because of the, there's something wrong with the video now. Okay, a very good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and to our friends in uh, the island of Bintan, Dr. Wan, J. Emilia, and uh, Dr. Frederick from Batam Island, and also a very good evening to Dr. Roshti, the founder and CEO of iPortal from New York. So uh, this morning we are having this uh, event, uh, Bintan uh, Tourism Webinar and uh, this is something uh, we look forward uh, and we learned a lot from our earlier event that we had uh, in Batam. So uh, iPortal and DHS uh, Hospitality Academy, uh, basically we, are, we have teamed up together to, to have webinars in tourism and also have training programs in the area of hospitality uh, through our Asia Center for Tourism and Technology. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I would like to call upon Dr. Wan Rudy Iskandar, the head of uh, tourism in the island of uh, Bintan to give his speech. Over to you, Dr. Wan. Halo, selamat pagi. Morning, Cewan. Boleh saya mulai? Ya, yeah, can hear you. Baik, saya pakai bahasa Indonesia saja boleh ya? Boleh, boleh, boleh. Baik, bahan-bahan uh, juga sudah saya bagikan tadi sudah ada di sana ya? Uh, Dr. Sudah. Dr. Wan bagi dengan Heli ke? Sudah. Okey, okey. Sudah ada ya? Baik. Uh, baik. Terima kasih. Eh, Assalamualaikum. Eh, selamat pagi. Salam sejahtera untuk kita bersama. Terima kasih kepada seluruh rekan-rekan yang hadir pada pagi hari ini eh, atas diberikan kesempatan kepada saya untuk menyampaikan bahan-bahan eh, paparan eh, yang saya hormati dari pertama dari moderator Dr. Sri Kumar Sipakumaran dan eh, Dr. Rizky Sidik, CEO dari Founder di Portal. Kemudian rekan kami juga ada Pak Wayan dari Batam Tourism, kemudian juga ada Miss Emilia juga dari Politeknik Intan Cakrawala, kemudian uh, Dr. Muhammad Razib Muladin dari Malaysia yang hadir bersama pada pagi hari ini. Terima kasih atas kesempatan 
yang diberikan kepada saya untuk menyampaikan uh, materi tentang webinar pada pagi hari ini. Kami dari Bintan akan menyampaikan menyangkut masalah safety and security tourism ya, yang akan disampaikan. Saya sebagai perkenalkan diri saya, nama saya uh, Dr. Andes Wadud Iskandar, saya selaku Kepala uh, Dinas Kebudayaan dan Pariwisata Kabupaten Bintan. Uh, selamat berkenalan kepada seluruh uh, peserta. Uh, Mudah-mudahan nanti bisa ada waktu peluang bisa hadir ke Bintan. Baik, kita lanjutkan. Uh, mohon saya ambil waktu singkat tadi untuk memperkenalkan Kabupaten Bintan. Sila dilanjut materi saya. Oke. Operator. Boleh. Uh, ini adalah uh, gambar umum Kabupaten Bintan. Oke, okay, dilanjut terus. Sila. Uh, Heli, you have to change. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, singkat saja saya sampaikan, uh, ini adalah uh, Kabupaten Bintan. Bintan itu kembali lagi back. Kembali lagi sebelum kita. Back again. Kembali ke awal boleh? Eh, awal eh, gambaran Pulau Bintan dimulai sekali Halo, oh, ya. Mana ini lagi dulu saya kasih gambaran baik. Eh uh, Cici dan Puan yang saya hormati, eh, saya nak beri gambaran tentang kondisi Kabupaten Bintan. Kabupaten Bintan ini dia punya wilayah adalah sebuah kawasan yang dekat perbatasan border ya. Di atasnya ada Malaysia, ada Singapura. Kemudian dekat selatan itu ada wilayah uh, Daik Ringga. Kemudian juga ada perbatasan. Kami punya batasan itu sampai ke Natuna, sampai ke Kalimantan. Jadi cukup laut. Sebagian besar uh, wilayah Bintan ini uh, banyak Sebagai besar hampir 96 persen itu wilayah laut eh, sekitar 6 persen saja di wilayah wilayah daratan dia lah gitu. Jadi memang makanya potensi pariwisata dia lebih mengarah kepada kawasan-kawasan eh, yang bersifat eh, kelautan ataupun mungkin turisme yang bersifat keharian. Oke kita lanjut ini kondisi awal saja saya sampaikan. Saya hanya dapat memberikan gambaran kondisi Kabupaten Bintan. Uh, ini adalah uh, kondisinya penduduk kami, kemudian generasi-generasi yang ada, kemudian uh, angka kelahiran dan lain-lain. Ini gambaran umum saja. Uh, dapat saya sampaikan bahwa uh, Kabupaten Bintan ini adalah sebuah kabupaten yang berada di Provinsi Kepulauan Riau, Riau Island ya. Dia terdiri dari beberapa kabupaten lain, ada Batam, ada Lingga, ada Natuna, ada Karimun, ada Anambas. Uh, juga Batam. Jadi dia salah satu bagian kabupaten dari Provinsi Kuriau dengan jumlah penduduk dia mencapai lebih kurang sebanyak uh, tidak banyak hanya lebih kurang 165 penduduk saja. 165 ribu penduduknya dan generasinya yang sudah cukup bagus sampai berakhir. Ini hanya gambar umumnya saya sampaikan mudah-mudahan nanti Cici dan Puan bisa memahami kondisi Kabupaten Bintan ya. Uh, Oke okay, dilanjutkan saja itu kita next saja. Kita next. Oke, okay, lanjut next. Ini adalah kondisi gambaran. Karena kondisi eh, saya berikan gambaran bahwa eh, kondisi pariwisata Kabupaten Bintan ini yang tahun 2019 eh, itu kondisi pariwisatanya cukup bagus cik sekalian ya. Eh, Di mana eh, kami di tahun 2019 bisa mencapai lebih kurang 1,2 juta wisatawan yang hadir, turisme yang hadir ke Bintan dengan uh, ini ya 1,06 dengan jumlah wisatawan yang hampir mencapai ada yang berasal dari luar negeri maupun dalam negeri capaian yang cukup bagus tapi dengan kondisi pada tahun 2020 dan 2021 ini uh, pandemi mengakibatkan jumlah kunjungan juga menjadi berkurang kenapa? karena memang 
pembatasan-pembatasan penduduk yang uh, jauh lah ya, tidak boleh masuk dan lain-lain. Uh, ini mengakibatkan uh, penduduk miskin juga semakin bertambah, kemudian pendapatan daerah kami juga semakin berkurang, kemudian pengangguran-pengangguran uh, juga semakin berkurang. Tapi mudah-mudahan di akhir-akhir tahun 2021 ini dengan adanya uh, beberapa program pemerintah PPKM yang boleh membukakan kawasan wisata kembali, Insya Allah ekonomi di Kepulauan Riau ataupun di Bintan akan semakin baik pada masa yang datang. Oke, okay, kita next. Gambaran umum saja saya kasihkan gambaran. Silah, Cik. Okay. Jadi ini kondisinya, karena kondisi pandemi kemarin kita hampir banyak menurun, jumlah wisatawan juga menurun, tenaga kerja juga banyak terdampak ya. Eh. E, banyak terjadi pemutusan hubungan kerja, kemudian juga pendapatan sektor wisata juga menurun, ekonomi juga menurun sekitar hampir 4% turun. Mudah-mudahan tapi sudah di akhir tahun ini sudah mulai bagus kembali. Oke, okay? saya lanjutkan saja ini hanya gambar umum saja kondisi Kabupaten Bintan. Lanjut. E, Puan, saya sampaikan bahwa untuk di Kabupaten Bintan itu sebuah destinasi yang cukup bagus ya dari sisi turismenya. Kami punya satu kawasan yang menarik yaitu kawasan di Lagoy eh, dengan hampir mempunyai lebih kurang eh, 18 hotel. Tapi kondisi pandemik ini hotel kami yang terbuka saja lebih kurang hanya lebih kurang sekitar eh, 7 hotel saja yang buka. Eh, 8 Sampai sembilan hotel sementara waktu masih off dulu menunggu kondisi pembukaan perbatasan. Karena memang, kenapa? Uh, hampir 60-70% tamu kami itu berasal dari Singapura lewat uh, pelabuhan Singapura. Jadi sepanjang itu Singapura tidak buka dengan bintang, maka wisatawan juga bisa hadir. Kemudian kami sampaikan untuk kawasan lain di luar-luar Pagoy, di Trikora juga punya ada beberapa hotel-hotel yang lain itu. Ini jumlah kamar yang ada di kawasan Bintan. Ini gambaran umum saja. Oke, dilanjut. Ya kan? Ini. Uh, Cikir Puan, jadi uh, untuk strategi utama lah, ya, pemulihan pariwisata Kabupaten Bintan, kami melakukan beberapa hal karena uh, kondisi dampak COVID kemarin yang kita lalui, ada beberapa yang kita lakukan. Pertama, ada program yaitu Safe Travel, untuk meningkat rasa aman bagi perjalanan wisatawan. Eh, pertama, melakukan program vaksin. April 2021, kita sudah melakukan vaksin. Tahap pertama, kita lakukan vaksin itu untuk eh, pelaku pariwisata. Awal 6.000 pelaku pariwisata pekerja-pekerja sudah kita berikan vaksin dan sekarang sudah hampir seluruh penduduk di Bintan sudah kita berikan vaksin COVID itu capaian sudah mencapai lebih kurang eh, tahapan pertama itu lebih kurang 91 persen kemudian tahapan kedua itu ada yang sudah mencapai eh, 70 persen eh, pemerintah sekarang sedang program yaitu untuk mengejar untuk eh, para orang-orang tua usia-usia uh, emas yang masih uh, tidak mau melakukan vaksin. Ini program kami yang dilakukan oleh pemerintah untuk mengejar supaya capaian dalam pelaksanaan vaksin ini bisa yang bagus. Alhamdulillah, uh, program vaksin ini sepertinya cukup bagus karena sampai sekarang angka uh, jangkitan daripada COVID ini sangat menurun di Kloriau, di Bintan juga. Hari ini sudah mencapai nol, zero ya, uh, pencapaian uh, terdampak daripada COVID. Di Batam kemarin hanya ada dua saja, jadi ini sudah cukup bagus. Kemudian beberapa program kami melakukan pemberian sertifikasi. Sertifikasi itu artinya sertifikat kebersihan bagi hotel, jaminan dari kementerian untuk standar protokol dia. Kemudian ada beberapa program lain yaitu bagi beberapa hotel ada penghapusan pajak atau tax untuk memberikan insentif supaya mereka bisa bangkit kembali. Kemudian yang terakhir yaitu merubah target Artinya untuk membangkitkan pariwisata Bintan ini kami sambil menunggu program buka border kita membuatkan program-program yaitu merubah target dari target kita yang untuk wisatawan luar negeri kita target untuk di dalam negeri saja. Artinya dengan jumlah penduduk yang ada di Bintan, Batam, kemudian di Indonesia sendiri yang berasal dari Sumatera dan lain politik ini memberikan target kami untuk supaya bisa wisatawan bisa hadir ke kami lah gitu. Ini cukup bagus untuk membangkitkan ekonomi bagi wisatawan yang ada di Bintan ini itu. Oke, okay, next lanjut. 
Kiran, okay. Nah, ini ada beberapa program yang kita lakukan yaitu dengan memberikan barcode kode boleh dilindungi scan kemudian untuk wisatawan yang hadir bisa mendapatkan beberapa program-program di hotel-hotel yang kita lakukan. Oke, dilanjut. Silakan. Ini hanya beberapa item saja yang kita lakukan. Okay, next. Uh, kemudian uh, sekarang pemerintah memberikan uh, beberapa kebijakan untuk membuka. Ini yang penting untuk di samping kami tadi mengupayakan Perjalanan Indonesia itu di dalam domestik saja yang hasilnya cukup bagus. Sekarang eh, capaian hunian hotel itu di tamu-tamu yang ada di Bintan itu akhir pekan itu capaian sekitar 80 persen ada walaupun dengan beberapa pemberian kemudahan yaitu pertama diskon harga dan harga domestik dengan harga yang biasa itu juga berbeda. Ini memberikan eh, tapi hunian sudah bagus dan banyak karyawan-karyawan sudah mulai bekerja. Beberapa Rencana yang akan dilakukan dengan travel bubble yang ada di Bintan, yaitu uh, vaksin travel lain yang rencana pemerintah Indonesia lakukan dengan Singapura, uh, itu ada dengan pemberian vaksin, uh, syarat-syaratnya harus ada uh, kartu vaksin, kemudian sudah melakukan tes PCR, kemudian ada skema PCR yang akan dibuka, kemudian ada memberikan asuransi, kemudian ke ketentuan visa. Oke, dilanjut. Namun sampai saat ini kami sampaikan eh, program ini masih menunggu kebijakan di tanggal 29 ini. Eh, 29 November ini apakah akan dibuka tidak kebijakan. Karena sampai sekarang ini yang baru dibuka tanggal 29 November itu adalah dengan eh, ketentuan eh, bandara. Artinya perjalanan dari eh, Singapura ke Jakarta. Kita di Bintan ini umumnya perjalanan ada melalui perjalanan lewat pelabuhan laut yaitu di uh, BBT atau melalui jaringan peri ya peri terminal itu kemudian ini ada satu alat yang untuk mendeteksi uh, tracing bagi turis yang nanti apabila dia dilakukan masuk dari Singapura ke Bintan kami akan menggunakan nama alatnya menggunakan yaitu blue pass tracing jadi dia ini bisa melacak Siapa, siapa saja yang melakukan kontak dengan tetamu tadi sehingga kalau terjadi jangkitan COVID-19 kita tahu sehingga itu segera di, di hati, hati itu kemudian ada program-program scanning pengunjung dan lain-lain kami sampaikan bahwa untuk di Kini Depuan eh, Bintan memang sampai saat ini beberapa tetamu dari Malaysia itu kita belum punya pelabuhan yang bersifat khusus ya yang Masuk dari Johor ke Bintan belum ada. Yang ada itu adalah tetamu dari Malaysia itu masuknya lewat Batam. Nanti dari Batam baru nyeberang ke Bintan. Tahun 2019 kami sudah pernah mengupayakan untuk ada perjalanan dari Johor ke Bintan. Tapi karena kondisi COVID, program tersebut kita berikan dulu awal. Mudah-mudahan nanti next di 2022 kalau kondisi juga bagus, kita coba nanti program perjalanan dari Johor ke uh, Lagoy Bintan ini akan dibuka kembali lah kita upayakan untuk ada rencana-rencana ke depan. Oke okay, dilanjut. Uh, ini adalah penjelasan Cici Sepuan. Nanti kalau uh, kondisi COVID kemudian ada pembukaan perbatasan uh, yang direncanakan tanggal 29 November ini kami hanya menerima tetamu itu hanya pada pada kawasan-kawasan lagoi saja dengan kawasan-kawasan tertentu ya pada hotel-hotel tertentu saja dengan pemberian ada zona-zona yang dibatasi. Jadi tetamu ataupun wisatawan itu tidak boleh keluar dari kawasan-kawasan lagoi itu. Dia hanya boleh pada kawasan itu sampai nanti kondisi yang bisa lebih bagus. Ini zona-zona yang kami bagi baru zona yang sudah vaksin dan ada beberapa hotel yang ikut karakteristik saat ini. Ada Nirwana, kemudian ada beberapa hotel lain sampai termasuk juga Holiday Villa. Ini kondisi eh, pembatasan-pembatasan bagaimana perjalanan yang seperti dan seperti itu akan lebih bagus bagi menjamin COVID selamat di Bintan akan lebih bagus pada masa akan datang. Oke, okay, di lanjut next. Ini sudah kita lakukan tadi, hal-hal eh, yang kita lakukan tadi kita merakukan target marketing tadi perusahaan masyarakat berbasis masyarakat kemudian eh, pasarnya kita ambil pasar domestik tidak berjalan alhamdulillah sudah cukup bagus sekarang 
dengan ekonomi yang sudah agak bangkit ya dibandingkan dengan kemarin pada awal-awal covid di mana uh, pasar yang ada itu tidak memungkinkan kita terima insyaallah nanti tanggal 29 kalau kondisi covid apa kondisi pembukaan perbatasan jalan ekonomi akan lebih bagus tapi kami sampaikan bahwa tanggal 24 Desember sampai dengan tanggal 2 Januari 2002 itu pemerintah kembali akan melakukan pembatasan perjalanan karena eh, mengatasi kerumunan orang-orang dalam jalur banyak supaya jangan terjadi peningkatan COVID lagi ke depan sehingga nanti beberapa hotel-hotel hanya bisa dibatasi sekitar 50 persen saja isi yang dalam satu kawasan kemudian kawasan-kawasan tidak dibenarkan melakukan eh, perayaan tahun baru tidak dibenarkan perayaan Natalan di tempat terbuka. Artinya pembukaan orang-orang dalam dua ramai itu government tidak membenarkan kegiatan-kegiatan itu. Oke, dilanjut. Next. Saya rasa mungkin uh, ini gambaran daripada beberapa uh, gambaran dari kondisi pariwisata. Artinya kami melakukan upaya-upaya supaya untuk membuka kawasan perbatasan pariwisata Bintan itu program-program kita sudah lakukan eh, seperti perjalanan dengan membatasi tamu-tamu hanya pada kawasan-kawasan tertentu saja yang tidak dibuka dan tidak boleh eh, keluar dari kawasan. Mungkin itu gambaran dari kami, mudah-mudahan nanti bisa kita lakukan dialog eh, pembicaraan bersama. Dari saya cukup sekian. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Silakan Cik Sri Kumar Sebakuran. Saya berikan Uh, waktu yang tepat. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ya. wabarakatuh. Oke, okay, uh, terima kasih ya uh, Dr. Wan. Uh, sekarang saya akan buat uh, summary yang apa uh, Dr. Wan uh, tadi uh, bentangkan lah. Okay. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would just like to summarize on what uh, Dr. Wan uh, mentioned in his uh, presentation. And, and this summary is what do my understanding. Okay. Uh, basically, Bintan is an island. Uh, it is uh, very near to Singapore, uh, Malaysia and the island of Kalimantan. And 95% of uh, Bintan is uh, in waters. Okay, it's basically an island. And they promote uh, tourism. And most of their tourists are from Singapore. And uh, if somebody, if a uh, tourist wants to go to Bintan Island, they have to go to Batam and then from Batam they go to Bintan. There's no direct uh, ferry ter uh, terminal. But uh, they are trying to uh, develop one uh, uh, from Johor Bahru, Malaysia to Bintan Island. So Bintan, the total hotels in Bintan is about 60 over and they have about uh, 4,000 over rooms uh, in Bintan. And uh, in Bintan, the COVID is controlled. There, there is no new COVID cases. And 90% uh, of the population has been vaccinated. And uh, Bintan is the first island in Indonesia, or first place in Indonesia that has this blue chip. And uh, they're trying to have this travel from uh, Singapore uh, into uh, Bintan on November 29th on the VTL. Okay. So, uh, at, at the moment, Bintan is uh, promoting uh, domestic tourism, uh, trying to get uh, uh, people from various parts of Indonesia into the island of Bintan. And uh, they uh, basically, uh, Bintan has been affected very badly with the, uh, uh, the, what you call it, the COVID, where people have lost job, hotels have closed down, and uh, they have... Uh, not done well in the, in the tourism industry. So uh, they look forward uh, in opening up Bintan, uh, where they have certain zones uh, where you can where tourists can be in that particular zone. They have zoned up the areas for tourists to be there, and uh, they have to be uh, vaccinated. So uh, something interesting that uh, doctor in doctor one's presentation they had a thing called CHSC. Uh, cleanliness, health, safety, environment, and sustainability. Uh, this is what they are moving towards, and this is what they are looking at. So, uh, this is the sh uh, short summary of what uh, Dr. Wan's uh, presentation was. And uh, I, I thank you, Dr. Wan. Uh, wish you all the best. And uh, we hope that when the borders open, uh, we can visit Bintan. 
uh, personally I have visited Batam but not Bintan so uh, I look forward uh, uh, coming over to Bintan and uh, uh, thank you very much so ladies and gentlemen uh, now we would like to call upon uh, Dr. Roshdi uh, who is based in New York and uh, he is the founder and CEO of iPortal so uh, Dr. Roshdi it's over to you okay um uh, very good morning to friends and colleagues. Uh, peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum. It's a pleasure for me to represent iPortal here and this important event. And uh, Bintan, as told by uh, Dr. Wan, looks like a very beautiful place, and I look forward to visiting it in the near future. I wanted to share a few words uh, with uh, our guests and my fellow uh, speakers. Um, uh, basically, um, looking at why iPortal, working with DHS, is doing these uh, weekly uh, webinars uh, since um, June or so, one of the things that happens in pandemics is lack of information. When you have uncertainty, information becomes a premium commodity. You know, people want to know who is doing what what is working, what is not working. So our contribution in this particular uh, period since June has been to do webinars on a periodic basis to try to give a 360 degree view of tourism and hospitality. I'll share with you some of the events that we've done and why we did those events what some of the outcomes are and what the implications of those events are for our present friends in Bintan. So we did an event uh, called Tech Tourism. You know, the reason we chose Tech Tourism was because of contactless robotics, whether it's at the airport, whether it's at the hotel or the resort. These are the things that a guest is looking for. And the guest is the customer, the customer is right. So if your destination does not have elements of technology that they are seeking, then they may not consider you. So there was a lot of interesting outcomes from our tech tourism uh, seminar. So that was one. Another seminar that we did was on housekeeping. Housekeeping was traditionally back office, often a cost center. But in the pandemic environment, housekeeping has become a frontliner. Guests want to know what the SOPs are. Guests want to know what's going on, how clean it is between guests checking out and new guests checking in. So housekeeping was an absolute uh, wonderful event. We had wonderful speakers and we look forward to doing it again because this is important to paying guests. If you are not talking about housekeeping, SOPs, what is being done and answering their questions to their satisfaction, you will not be considered by the particular guest. International guests bring hard currency uh, and hard currency is an important contributor to the local GDP. So that was an extremely important takeaway. We also did um, events on sustainability as Dr. Wan talked about sustainability and Islamic tourism. At one level, they're about stewardship. Stewardship means responsibility to the planet, to the people, and to uh, profits. So what we have found that going forward, the concept of mass tourism is going to become less prominent and the concept of sustainable tourism, whether it's ecotourism, agriculture tourism, there are about 66 plus types of different tourism, and we will be showcasing a number of those on iPortal when we uh, launch uh, iPortal 2.0 in a few short weeks. The point here is sustainable tourism in places like Bintan is going to be part of their DNA because people come to see the natural beauty, not see plastics and litter on the beaches. So this becomes an important part of destinations. We also signed MOUs with the National Cancer Society. One of the things that we learned is there are cancer patients, but there are also productive people who are making things, who are promoting things. So what we have on iPortal is a marketplace 
we want to put micro SMEs and SMEs that are linked to the hospitality and tourism sector onto the platform because they've been hit hard. Anything that we can do to help them, and there's no charge to them from our point of view because it's our duty and obligation to help those who've been hurt. And hopefully uh, down the road, we'll be able to work together to make more money, but it's important to extend a, a helping hand to those who've been hit hardest and have few safety nets to carry them over. We also um, had a very interesting uh, event that we did and signed an MOU called Winning Tourism. These are former athletes in Malaysia who retired and the transitioning into their new life has been difficult. And so there are some wonderful organizations led by wonderful people who are doing great things for these athletes. And some of these athletes are becoming and are entrepreneurs. And we basically are putting these athletes and their products and services on iPortal, again, under the marketplace. Why? Because they deserve a second chance because they've been hit hard during the COVID crisis. So one of the takeaways in a lot of these MOUs that we've signed, a lot of the webinars that we've done is the role of the micro SMEs and the SMEs. Traditionally, they've not been counted as part of tourism and hospitality. But I think the COVID crisis, if one can find a silver lining, meaning some lessons, one of the important lessons is the role that micro SMEs and SMEs play to help tourism and hospitality um, flourish. So we want to do what we can and we are doing what we can and we'll do even more, whether it's in Batam or we look forward to working with Dr. Wan and the stakeholders of uh, micro SMEs and SMEs to raise their profile so tourists can find them faster and look at what they have instead of taking so much time in finding these souvenir shops, for example. Um, we've got an event coming up uh, on November 30th. It's called Safe Tourism. I think that it's going to be one of the most important events we'll have done this year because in it, we will show you a COVID-19 heat map uh, within Indonesia, within Malaysia, within ASEAN. I think it's going to be a must have tool for those who are traveling within the ASEAN. The data is from the World Health Organization, Oxford and CDC. So we're looking forward to sharing that with you. At this point in time, I would like to stop and again, thank uh, Dr. Sri. Uh, uh, thank the good people of Bintan for allowing me to share a few thoughts with you. So thank you very much. I wish the rest of the speakers a wonderful um, conversation and please for the guests, please engage and enjoy yourself. So thank you very much, Dr. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Roshti. Thank you for the, for the speech. And uh, I think it was uh, something very interesting. And uh, we will also uh, like to uh, highlight here on our event on 30th of uh, November on safe tourism. Uh, we have great speakers on board. Uh, it is free. And uh, we, we hope that uh, all of you will be there to, uh, to attend this webinar. Uh, I would like to call upon Dr. Frederick uh, from the Batam uh, Tourism Polytechnic. Uh, who made this possible, who made this possible uh, for us to have this event in Bintan. And over to you, uh, Dr. Frederick. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Sri. Very good morning, Dr. Sri and uh, Dr. Dr. Rusdi and uh, Dr. Wan Rudi and uh, Bu Emilia dan Dr. Rajib. Okay. Uh, very good morning. Uh, I love to be present and explain the Bintan Island. Yeah, uh, Bintan Island is one the more province in the Riau Archipelago in Indonesia. Yeah. Okay. The Bintan Island uh, general issue related travel travel bubble bubble quarantine quarantine period was the all pollution. Bintan tourism is the suspect. Bintan is one of the island located in the Riau Archipelago province. Yeah, in Riau Archipelago province, aside China in India. 
Maritime Trading Route based on history. Bintan was on rule by the Sultan Masur Shah, 14519 and 1466, and the rest of the become part of the Malacca Sultan and the was Dutch colony in 1911 and the colonized by by Japan in the 1945. Based on our history, Bintan is unique uniqueness in its natural potential destination and the marine tourism yeah marine tourism attraction the uniqueness of the bintan island is that the consists of the over by european traders free trade zone the biggest salts water swimming pool sea trips on the occasion of the today ya yeah, kan Presentation I will discuss about the travel bubble quarantine period waste pollution bintan tourism is uh, suspend. Travel travel bubble. Travel bubble in the bintan. As now as the travel corridor and the corona corridor are essentially and the exclusive the partnership between two or more countries that have demonstrated the considerate success in the containing and combating the COVID-19 pandemic. Within their perspective border, the Ministry of the Transportation of the Riau Archipelago Province, the government and the Capri, Kepulauan Riau, have agreed to open a tourist area at the Bintan Resort as the pilot project for the travel bubble of the foreign tourists The location was used because the area is isolated, not directly affiliated to be community. And travel bubble. Uh, next, the quarantine period. The real archipelago, provincial government ensure the comfort and the safety of the tourists. They will not feel confined for day during quarantine but can even travel in integrated area. Early this week, the Singapore will apply the affectionate travel line or the VTL scheme or a quarantine free travel land from Indonesia. It is planned start starting November 29, 29 November 2021. Indonesian citizen WNI, warga negara Indonesia, can enter Singapore and no longer need to be quarantined. But the visitor have been completed, completely vaccinated. Responding to this scheme, the Rio Archipelago government also plow to implement PTL for the tourists from Singapore. And next, the West oil pollution. Oil pollution, The often Morning. I think there is a uh, Patrick, uh, Dr. Patrick. I think there's a problem with his uh, Zoom. He, he dropped off. Uh, um, Haley, can we move to the next speaker first, uh, Amelia? And then when Patrick comes back, then he can he can join. He can do the next session. Uh, Dr. Amelia, are you okay to? Yes, please. 
Okay. Oh, my line is the trouble. Okay. 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 Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Doctor, you're back. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. I'm back. Yeah. So because uh the my line in the trouble in the bottom. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Okay. Next uh presentation the Bintan Tourism Suspense. Bintan is at the tourist area in the Rio Archipelago, which is also affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. As of low March, many tourist attraction to the hotel and the resort were forced to close. In the 2019, Bintan Tourism Group is showing a positive trend. But since the COVID-19 pandemic, Bintan Tourism seems to be suspended. And the next presentation, the Bintan is Rio Archipelago is the prima donna. Uh, Bintan Island is one of the tourist gateway in Indonesia. This make Bintan Island the very potential to develop shopping tourism center and the cross border tourism. The bright the future of the tourism on the Bintan Island can also be seen from the the data on the foreign the tourist the visit. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Shi and Dr. Rusdi, and I thank you for your time and opportunity. I close the Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, salam pariwisata, dan salam pesona Indonesia. Thank you, Dr. Rusdi. Dr. Rusdi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Frederick, for the presentation on uh, Bintan. Yes, uh, Malacca and The Riau Islands are very well related. Uh, we had the uh, the Sultan or the royal family from Palembang called uh, Parameswara. He's the one who discovered Malacca and uh, ruled Malacca for a long time until the Portuguese came and took over Malacca from them. So uh, this is something very interesting. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Frederick. Okay. So now we would like to call upon. Uh, Miss Amelia, are you? Uh, she's the director of Polytechnic of Bintan. Uh, to say uh, a few words. Over to you, uh, uh, Miss Amelia. Yes, thank you, Dr. Sri. Uh, is it uh, possible for me to do my own share screen? Can. Yes. Thank you. It's ready, yeah. Can you all see my screen? My sh yes, sharing already. All right, thank you, thank you, Dr. Sri. Good morning for Pawan Rudi, Dr. Rusdi, then uh, Oyan, Dr. Muhammad Rafif, and all participants. Good morning to all good people here. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity given. It is an honor for me um, joining this precious webinar conducted by my portal and DTP. In this time, I would like to share a bit about how Bintan winning tourism in your normal. As we know that before pandemic, we used to see a group of people in one tourism destination. The, the example is this one is at Lagoy Bay. There are a lot of people there doing gather and hang out in the same place without worry of being infected. But nowadays, as we can see, everybody must be aware with that thing. The pandemic thing, so we have to wear masks, our face shield everywhere in every occasion, including traveling, dancing, using the mask, something like that. And before we discussing more about how to win, this is me. You may call me Kaka or Dewi. I have a long, very long name. And I'm now at Polytechnic Bintan Chakrawala. That's all for me. And now we are talking about change. Because of the pandemic, we have to change, right? When the world changing and living things have to survive, the choice is either change or remain silent 
and die. And we do not want to be die. That's why we do changing. Let's see the sales graphic before and after pandemic. Before pandemic, we can see that there are 70%, 63%. And now after COVID, the sales team only got very low. And it all happened in around the world, not just in time. And this one is the transition curve. We are in a pandemic era. Once the pandemic exists, we are all shocked, right? Surprised. And after that, we are denied disbelief. How come it can be happened to me or maybe to us? And then most people starting to frustrate it. And some of them start to aware with this condition and then accept it. They start doing experiment in order to survive their life. This is what Pak Wan Rudy done after a year of pandemic. Government tourism office started to do a, such a training to all of the tourism actor, homestay owner, operator, restaurant, tourism destination operator, and others actor. At first, the training is to motivate them to wake up and to do something for tourism. Yeah, it is hard, but we can't. And proven, we did it now. They are starting to search what they can do because they realize that they live with the pandemic. We cannot against, but get on. And nowadays, uh, we are in the condition, as Pawan has said at first, that we do integrating creativity that has done to be survived, bring us to the next level of um, highly accepted, the new skills. We have to change. Uh, we, we all know about FUCA, right? The negative side is on the left side. Volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity. We have to change the negative side of VUCA to the positive one. That is the um, vision, understanding, clarity, and agility. So that it can be conducted. That we have done is to focus on alternative tourism. After we understand about the VUCA and we have to creative, we choose that kind of tourism, alternative tourism. It is all done here in Bintan. He posts, Pawan, I mean, posts the tourism actor to prepare the condition to face the, this kind of tourism, alternative tourism, with a single families, friends, and focus on experiences, doing photography, learning local language with minimum um, tourist in one place, something like that. And now, when we are talking about business, tourism business, what business do we want to be during COVID-19 or in pandemic now? The virgin already Past. Then Learning Jones is running now, realizing that we didn't create the, this situation, but we can manage our response to it. We review our communities to ensure um, our tone is appropriate. Our tourist destination is already do the certification of uh, JHSA as Pak Wen said before. And the last one is the growth zone. We adapt rather than resist. We stay calm now, take the ownership and understand that COVID is still 
in our hand. And what to do in order to be in a growth zone? We are now in a learning zone. And what should we do then? This one. We have a good communication between the tourism actor, the government, and also the tourist itself. We have the project planning and managing in a new normal, dealing with resistance and ability to handle uncertainty. And can then we can do high performance in good interpersonal with creative thinking and being a role model. Bintan wants to be a role model to another island in Riau Archipelago. This is all for me. Please welcome to discuss. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Miss Amelia, or call you Kaka Amelia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, basically, uh, I learned something new today, and uh, the the thing that picked up my interest was on uh, alternative tourism. Yes. And I think what you have presented today is something an eye opener, uh, not for Bintan Island. I think this can be something that uh, we can do uh, for the tourism industry. Yes, as, uh, for sure. Okay. So, uh, thank you very much. It was very interesting. Uh, You're welcome. I have, uh, I have sent you a message and, uh, and uh, I hope that uh, maybe we'll talk further on uh, doing a webinar in January in Bintan Island on alternative oh. tourism. Yes. Uh, with your Polytechnic and also with uh, uh, Dr. Frederick. Uh, I think this is something uh, very, very interesting uh, how you have uh, uh, laid out the plan. And, and it's my pleasure, Bob. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Miss Amelia. Uh, yes. Thank you very much. And I, I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have our last speaker here, Dr. Razif. Uh, I always call him the icon of uh, tourism. Uh, a great guy. Uh, I'm, I'm following his uh, lecture series, uh, hopefully to qualify for a master's. Very informative. Uh, he is the president of the Tourism Educators Association Malaysia. Uh, he is from UITM and also uh, the consultant for IBE. Uh, so over to you, uh, Dr. Razif. Hey, uh, thank you, my good friend there, Dr. Sri Kumar. And I also would like to extend uh, my introduction to Dr. Wan Budi Iskandar, Head of Tourism Bintan, and Dr. Emilia Ayu from the Polytechnic Chikrawala. So the duo itself is very catchy, eh? Chikrawala. And my good friend from uh, Batam, Dr. Tubi Wayan Tarik, or I call him Derek, as well as, well, as, well as Dr. Rushdi. Okay, for today, I would like to share uh, something I maybe uh, I have shared before, but uh, I think. Uh, it's no harm, right, to share, to reshare again. Okay, let me share my screen. I hope that it is uh, audible to all of you. Okay, so today I would like to share on this island tourism, tourist segmentation post pandemic. So because of, uh, because of looking at the topic that we discussed today, I think maybe we can start revisiting this topic. And in fact, I have one uh, study or research grant that's focusing on Langkawi and maybe in the future we can also share or exchange information on what best for us to, you know, to, to, to uh, come up with something for this uh, future tourism outlook. Okay, for... Okay, um, I try to search information on Bintan Island and from the research, from the literature reviews, and I found out that Bintan Island is the fourth largest contributors uh, for tourism in Indonesia. And uh, you have about almost, you know, equal fair share of foreign and domestic tourism. And it's quite impressive where you have, I think, about 1.6 million tourists that visited uh, the island, even though the island is not really big. But somehow, 
he managed to bring 1.6 million is impressive. And then major tourists from China is about 35% because from the literature search, uh, the paper mentioned about the Chinese investment in the island. So that's why uh, people from mainland love to come to China, uh, sorry, to Bintan. And tourism is the largest revenue generators. And I would say from that input alone, and I have this kind of, you know, perception that the tourism industry or the economy is really affected because you realize so much on tourism. And what should we do next? What should you do next? And for from the sharing by uh, the previous speakers, I would say that you have come out with a very impressive, you know, uh, uh, equation, very impressive uh, concepts that you all would like to pursue in the future. And so that's why, again, this one I mentioned here in Malaysia, so we come up with this uh, marketing strategy uh, for, for 2022 until 2026. And we have, you know, we have to agree that from uh, this year onward, we have to rest so much on domestic, you know, domestic market, or we call it as domestication, because we have to make sure that people from, for example, in Indonesia, you, have, you are blessed with uh, a very large, very huge population, more than 270 million. So that's why I would say that, how can you make them love, you know, to visit domestic, uh, to the domestic uh, destination, love to go out, love to stay at home more than you know, travel abroad. So you need to know them. So what will entice, what will attract them to go out? What kind of new products? What kind of viral message that will, you know, make them go out, make them visit the location, especially to Bintan? And then regionalization. So because of, we have to rely so much on our neighbor country. And I'd say that uh, Dr. Derek uh, have done this So his career. Research in this cross border tourism, and maybe he can also share later on this uh, regionalization where we have to form, for example, like Malaysia, Thailand, and Singapore also would like to propose this uh, BTL, or we call it mm -hmm. vaccinated travel mm -hmm. lead, maybe in December. So that's why we have to form, uh, you know, many uh, initiatives. So because of we want, because of the world is less connected, because of people are afraid to go out there. And sometimes uh, they have to, you know, they have to also uh, need to do home quarantine for more than five days when they come back to their home country. And then captive market. So today, so we need to learn, we need to revisit the word captive. So captive here, uh, they know uh, that we, we, we know the market, the market that we didn't reach. And it is a low hanging fruit, something that you can capture anytime. So it's in front of you. So for example, like in Ireland, so what kind of products do people love to go? For example, definitely after this pandemic, after the quarantine, people want to go out, people want to spend time with the family, with the loved one, and also want to you know to do sunbathing. So that kind of thing that you need to revisit or you have to re, you know, uh, advertise to them. And so that's why in the so the, the, the plan for 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 the future should be immediate. I would say that sometimes I call it a static or short-term strategies. So we have to cater to the need of 2022 up until 2023. But the main point here, are we going to remain the same or are we going to instill, or are we going to in, uh, introduce new business process? Like what mentioned by the previous speaker, so you have said that you need to do lots of soul searching and maybe you have to come up with a new resolution after you have done a brainstorming. So that's why at the end of the day, so we have to make we have to understand that maybe the whole scenario that we are currently facing is temporary. So that's why if let's say this thing would be over or we can rebound. So whatever plan that we have maybe need to be abandoned, right? So that's why it's important for us to think whether this one is temporary or we can say that this could be extended for maybe beyond 2023 up until 2025 because that's what we mentioned by the World Travel Organization. So the industry will rebound after 2024. So that's why I would say that it's lot, lots of soul searching or brainstorming to be done by all of us here. And I would like a kudos to uh, iPortal and uh, DHS for coming up with this kind of direction or discussion. And again, this, another thing that we have to also discuss of this unpredictability as well as how can we instill confidence to the not only to the uh, tourists, to the travelers, but also to the industry players. Like what we see 
for example, in Malaysia. So we face lots of problems in the form of workforce. When the industry restart, and I, I remember during the previous webinar, someone uh, stated that uh, we, uh, in Malaysia, the hospitality industry will face problems during weekend where they, they have you know, less workforce to do the housekeeping as well as to do, you know, to offer products. And then uh, definitely the swim, swimming pool, you, you cannot offer, uh, you have to, you know, you, you need to make sure that the, the capacity, so you have to observe half capacity so that kind of thing need to be, you know, need to be instilled. So because of you want to make sure that the market content well as national players. So that's why the policy is important. And because of that, but somehow we don't have the snap in this case scenario. And we we cannot rely on the data that we did available. For example, I mentioned to you earlier on when, when I try to search information about Bintan Island, uh, for all you know, I haven't been to Bintan. Uh, so hopefully after this the whole pandemic is over, then maybe Dr. Sri and I, we can go to Bintan and visit the beautiful island in Bintan and I try to search several tourism products and uh, maybe about two or three products come, come out. And maybe in the future, maybe you have to come, you need to come, you need to come up with more, uh, maybe promotion or maybe new contents like to bombard the market with contents. And okay, just now I mentioned about China. China have about 35% and I would say this is critical and because they have the spending power and they love to, you know, to shop and they love to, uh, you know, utilize or to use all the facilities and they don't mind to spend. So that's why it is important now when you don't have this, so you need to uh, rely on Malaysia and Singapore. And just now, uh, someone mentioned about uh, how to, you need to expand the connectivity. So this is important because you want to attract people from Malaysia and from Singapore, but the discussion must be done from now on. So hopefully by uh, at, the, at the beginning of next year, so you can start promoting this, you can start uh, allowing people or accepting people to visit your uh, you know, destination. And on top of that, so we, you cannot uh, forget about this, you know, the Indonesian market, because at the end of the day, this should be the one that you have to fulfill. You know, you need to satisfy the demand. You need to satisfy uh, their need of traveling. So, what will make them travel to be? Because you have lots of beautiful island over there, and definitely the competition, the, the inter competition between the island will be very steep for twenty twenty two up until twenty twenty three. So that's why I would say that position or get value for this domestic market. Okay, so uh, I, because we are all in this academy, so we have to, maybe we can start uh, revisit the plastic, uh, plastic marketing tool, for example. We, I think everyone here know about segmentation, targeting and positioning, and this one remains popular. But again, the most important question is, how can we define the most viable and profitable segment? Because like, uh, you know, we need to go back to the drawing board and maybe we have to find the information, something that can help us to, you know, uh, forecast about the future outlook. Like, can we rely on the internal data pre-COVID or, or do we have it? And can we rely on the data by the world governing bodies and the action by the competitors, for example, you, can, you have to look into the action by not only from the international market, but also from the uh, domestic island. Because maybe they will come up with you know new uh, branding uh, initiative or like the previous one we have uh, before this we have one webinar in Bali and the head of tourism mentioned about they focus more on the safety and also uh, to the streamline to streamline the process when when the visitors uh, you know arrive at the airport and. Findings in the research during COVID-19 is really critical. From what I've seen or from what I've browsed, I would say that maybe this one, this one is quite limited for Bintan. And maybe the, the uh, tourism association or agency uh, or the local uh, government need to maybe provide grant for the academia to come up with research, maybe a simple research to understand about the readiness of new products so uh, about you know what will be the uh, motivation. So we, we need that because it is important for us to assess the current scenario so that we, we will be we will be prepared of what will happen next. 
right? Okay, and then for this outlook in other disciplines of study. So we cannot work in silo. So we also have to find several information that can help us to predict focus about its future tourism. And finally, if this is important, and I would say that the, the use of technology, the social network, the mobile application is really critical. So we just we cannot just simply rely on the theory or the concept, everything nice on paper, but we have to dip, you know, we have to dive further to understand about what will be the content demanded by the user on how they, you know, their, their lifestyle or their behavior toward the content. Okay, so that's why the new, like, like uh, this is one of the case study that so far, uh, no findings. So that's why I would say that maybe uh, if see, or maybe if a uh, Malaysian uh, local agency can provide grant so that we can, uh, you know, try to study the success, uh, the success of this BTL coming this December 2021 so that we know maybe this one can be, you know, improved or can be expanded to other countries or maybe, you know, can be shared uh, what will be problems or challenges that faced by the industry players. And, okay, just now I mentioned about China market, right? Chinese market. Sorry. So Chinese market is different. I remember uh, last month, I went to this one, um, a friend told me about strategic marketing. Uh, where we have these uh, tour operators that serve Chinese market. At the same time, we also have the marketing uh, association or the National Tourism Association that focused on Chinese Chinese market. And I would say that sometimes we feel that the, the information that we gather, that we search from the online, uh, you know, sufficient for us to do the future prediction. But I would say that Actually, there are lots more that we have to study because when uh, my, I, my, my friend and I, if Dr. C also know, uh, Dr. Zoe, so we have done one research. So this is one of the research that we have done to understand about the mobile application for Chinese market. And, you know, Chinese market, they love to search, you know, they love to go to this, uh, uh, the word of mouth, the electronic word of mouth, as well as they look into the comment uh, or posting, TikTok, uh, lots of application. So that's why from the uh, word frequency, so this is one of the popular uh, research methodology in China, where they, when they start off the, the research, especially for the social science study, they will start by looking at the keywords, you know, the word frequency before, before they can come up with theme. From there, they will start, you know, dive into uh, several uh, concepts or uh, frameworks. So that's why, for example, like this, when, because China starting from maybe after this COVID-19, so this is what I've heard. So they say that uh, the, the, the government will not allow uh, upbound tourism, maybe up until uh, Winter Olympics. Maybe, meaning after 2020, maybe the government will allow because of safety and because of they want to, you know, promote uh, inbound uh, the, the domestic tourism. So that's why. But somehow, at the end of the day, we, all of us here, we have to agree that uh, in China, because they are a very big market and about more than uh, 50 million people travel abroad, so that's why they will increase in mobile application, number one. And number two, the three independent travelers. And number three will be the domestic tool. So this will be the thing that we have to understand. So we have to put into equation before we can do prediction or before we can say that we want to attract people uh, travels from China. So, so this data that I shared with you were the, uh, you know, the uh, word frequency that we uh, gathered from 2014 until 2021. So we can say that uh, this one is just for the uh, mobile apps for using because of the study that we conducted, we want to focus on because uh, China, China, China government uh, they started to you know promote this museum tourism and so because they want to increase uh, the appreciation toward culture so and so that's why this one I shared uh, last week and I would like to reshare again about this so, so I maybe Bintan, people from Bintan tourism can start looking into this so you, we have to understand that 
after this post pandemic, people will travel about uh, one to five days and they will go because of they want to spend more for relaxation as well as they want to visit new places. So Bintan have lots to offer. But somehow at the end of the day, you need to make sure that the product that you want to offer, that you want to market, should be new or should have been uh, you know, have, have have gone through several processes that you revamp the product. And okay, and for uh, senior travelers from our data, so they say that they will start off when they want to travel, they will they will look into package tours before they uh, you know and go to the tour company. And not so many people, not so many senior travelers will do the pre independent traveling traveling. Unlike senior travelers, you look into millennials, so they will be more FIT and less package tours. So you have to decide. So which one you want to serve? You want to serve both or you want to serve uh, the more purchasing power like senior travelers because they buy more, they spend more, and they, they're willing to you know uh, spend in these uh, package tours. So it's important right, because we want to benefit the companies in the, the countries. right? And so these are you know, separate information that I would like to share with you where 45% of travelers mentioned that they will spend below 500 and they spend maybe they will they will spend about five years and most of the people most of the spending will be uh, on accommodation so that's why right. it is important for us to understand if let's say the accommodation uh the accommodation rate is is expensive then it might affect the uh, you know number of these spending in that particular destination and how about millennium so far, we don't have the answer yet because we don't have data. And I would say maybe uh, the previous speakers and also the head of tourism Bintan can come up with this, you know, provided uh, providing trying to understand about millennials, especially in Indonesia, because I, I would say that this one would be attractive to us, right? And and finally, before I conclude my presentation, I would say that in 2021 day there's a sharp decline and drop in all segment analysis. But one thing for sure. The only increase is the technology usage adaptation by almost all sectors. You know, regardless of the age, regardless of the income, every everybody, you know, immersed with technology. So I would say they may in the future there will be a new wave, you know, a new wave of traveling. So that's concluded my presentation. Thank you, Dr. Sumar and Dr. Sri Kumar and all the panelists for listening and back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Razif, for the uh, very informative uh, speech. Uh, as, yes, very well pointed out that after this uh, new norm of traveling, uh, for me, when I look at it, I think uh, destinations have to start deciding what they specialize on, who they want to attract, uh, and, and what type of tourists they want to bring in into their, uh, into their country. This is something that is going to be very interesting to see. And uh, uh, thanks again, uh, Dr. Razif, and uh, thank you to all the speakers, uh, Dr. Wan, uh, Miss Amelia, uh, Dr. Frederick, Dr. Razif, uh, and also Dr. Rochdi from New York, and also uh, Miss Haley, who you won't see her, but she's the one who manages all this uh, event from the back end, uh, who has done a great job, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, we are having this uh, event in the state of Pahang in Malaysia called uh, Nature Tourism. And we are also having in uh, uh, Padang, Indonesia on the 29th of November. And 30th of November, uh, we have uh, the Safe Tourism. This is another event of ours uh, that is going to be held. And we hope that all of you uh, would attend this event. Uh, Dr. Razif is speaking in Padang and also in, in for the safe tourism. And uh, we will also showcase uh, another few more events that we are going to do in December. In our next uh, event, we will showcase. Uh, we are moving to other states and we look forward uh, for more collaboration with uh, in Bintan uh, with uh, Dr. M uh, Ms. Emilia's Polytechnic. Uh, we look forward for uh, more event next year, uh, more webinars. Uh, I think it's a good sharing session. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, have a great day and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sri. Thank you. Nice meeting you, Dr. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you.
Thank you. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. See you again.